All praises, all praises to the Most High. This is another Sabbath day. So we want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, the one that everybody calls Jesus that's on his way back to make the crooked way straight and the rough edges smooth. He'll be here directly. Just wait. Like David said, wait on the Lord and be a good, of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So that's what we're going to do. We're waiting on our Lord and Governor to get us out of this captivity. James chapter 1. And, and I want to and I want to uh, say peace and salutations to all the brothers that's out on, on all over the, the in all the corners all over the world bringing out this truth with sincerity. James chapter 1 verse 12. It says, "Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life." which the Lord has promised to them that love him. So listen to this. He said he's going to, the ones that endure the temptations, they're going to receive the crown of life that God has promised to those that love him. So remember John 14, 15 has to come in now. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Is that clear? That's what he said, John 14, 15. Anybody saying they love Yahweh, which is, that's God, he has a name, but they don't do anything he says, you don't love him. That's all lip service and hypocrisy. That's all that is. And he already knows what's going on here in this society. Isaiah 49, 22 to 26. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people. And they shall bring thy sons in their arms and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. So this this is talk, this is a lot this, this is about trading places. You guys did this to our people. So this is what the one you call Jesus is getting ready to do to you guys. You guys are going into captivity. That's what he says. You, we built up all your dynasties and your utopias. And guess what? You guys are getting ready to build up the Israelites' utopia. You guys are getting ready to do the same thing. That's that's what uh, Paul was saying in Galatians. He said, "Be not deceived." Yahweh is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. All the people that did all this stuff to our people, get ready for the recompense. It's get ready to come on you in a, in a terrible way. This is what the Lord said. See, a lot of people, they don't know what's in this Bible, but that's why he, he ordained the prophets to come out here and preach the word and be instant in season and out of season. That's, why, but that's what he put us here for, to come out here and preach the word to everyone, the Gentiles and everyone. And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. And they shall bow down to thee with their face towards the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. And that's why I had to bring out what David said earlier. We're waiting on the Lord, and we're waiting, and we're being of good courage. And he's the one that's strengthening our, our minds, which is the heart. This is what he said. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he's going to strengthen your heart. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captive delivered? But thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee and I will save thy children. So the Lord said he's going to contend with all the ones that contended with us. All the ones that mistreated us, he's going to deal with them. That's what the Lord is saying with the prophet Isaiah here. I gotta get my, get my glove on here, it's a little cold. He said, and I will contend with them that contend with thee, and I will save thy children, and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. So that's why people are dying. He said he's going to feed the ones that have been oppressing us with their own flesh. This is the Lord speaking. This is why all these things are happening. And they shall be drunken with their own blood, as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am the Savior and the Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. 
See, this is this goes back to that covenant that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But that covenant's not going to change because people didn't like what the Lord did from the foundation of the world. It's not changing a thing. He says he's the same. How you brothers doing? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's coming back for you, brothers. He's coming back for the 12 tribes of Israel. He's coming back for the so-called blacks, the so-called Native Americans, and the so-called Latinos. That's all he's coming back for. He's not coming back for all these people that oppress us and that hate him. He's coming to destroy all these people. And they know that. They know those ICBM missiles are going to be meeting them directly. When China starts to shoot them, Iran, North Korea, Russia, they know what's coming to them. They're getting ready to pay the piper for all the things they've done here in the body. They're getting ready to pay for their transgressions now. The Lord is going to make sure of it. Ecclesiastes 13, verse 17 and 18, and it reads, What fellowship hath the wolf with the lamb, so the sinner with the godly? What agreement is there between the hyena and a dog? And what peace between the rich and the poor? So the Lord, is, he's making a distinction. He's saying that people that are godly, they shouldn't be hanging out with the ungodly. He's saying, what fellowship do with a hyena with a dog? So why, why are the people who say they love God hanging out with people that are rotten? He said a tree is known by its fruit. So when he's talking about a tree, he's talking about people. How some people are just rotten apples, so they should stay away from the rotten apples. That's what this passage is saying. Stay away from all the rotten apples. That's what the Lord is saying. Because if you don't, the, the rotten apples, they're falling off of the tree. It's just a matter of time until the Lord takes care of them. He said the bounds that people have here, they're not going to pass those bounds. What he said to the prophet Job. The bounds that they have appointed, they're not going to pass. When the Lord says your time is up, that's it. There's a time and there's a season for everything under the heavens. A time to be born and then there's a time to die. Now this place is in that season where the Lord is getting ready to pay that visitation like he said to the prophet Jeremiah. He said, what are you going to do in the day of your visitation? He asked the question, like, what are you going to do when I pay you that visit? And he's not talking about coming to give you some tea and some coffee. That's not what the Lord is saying when he says, what are you going to do in the time of that visitation? When he pays that visit, you're going to know who paid you that visit because he's coming to take you out of here. That's what the, I'm going to make it plain, like Habakkuk said. He said, make it plain and write it upon the tables so they that hear it can read it. So you guys are hearing it, but you don't have to hear it. He said, those that despise the word of Yahweh, is, is, hey, you're not despising no man. You're only despising God, Yahweh, that gives us his spirit. People, when you hear this word, that's who you're despising. Just remember that. You're not despising me. You guys are despising the one that gives us his Holy Spirit. That's who you guys are despising, and you're going to pay the price for that. I can guarantee you that. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14 through 18, and it reads, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship with righteousness with unrighteousness? So now, now people got to take a look at themselves and look at the people they hang around. He said, don't be hanging out with unbelievers. This is what the Lord said. Then he said, uh, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion with, hath light with darkness? Because when he's talking about the darkness, he's talking about the wickedness that people are in. Remember John 8 verse 12, Yahawashai said, I am the light of the world. Anyone that follows me, they shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is his own words. What am I reading? The King James Holy Bible. That's what I'm reading. This is what he said. And I'm not worried about nobody's how he looks. And I'm not worried about their imputed eyes. Because the Lord said, don't even worry about them. He said, whom to fear? He said, fear the one that can hurt the body and cast the soul into hell. That's what he told us to fear. So we're not worried about no man. He actually said it would, uh, in uh, Acts, 5 and, uh, 40, Acts 5 and 29, through Peter, he said, we ought to obey Yahweh rather than man. So that's what we're going to do. Man disappoints here. All they do is tell lies, hypocrisy. All they, all they do is keep pushing oppression, their perpetual hatred. And God knows all about it because we're reading it now. It's all been written. 
All this has been written before the foundation of the world. But now, people are going to have to pay for what they've done here in the body. Now you're going to have to pay the price for what you've done here. Nobody goes unpunished. Nobody here. He's omnipotent. He sees all and knows all. This is like, just like he said in Amos chapter 9. He said, the eyes of the Lord, Yahweh, is upon the sinful kingdom. He said he's going to destroy it from off the face of the earth. Saving, he's not going to utterly destroy the house of Jacob. He's not going to utterly destroy him. He's going to save a remnant. A third of the people is going to get saved. But most people you see in passing are getting ready to die here. So, let's say of the Lord. Most people you see in passing are getting ready to die. That's what the Lord said. And what concord had, had Yahawashai with Baal? Or what part had he that believed with an infidel? So the Lord is asking the question, why are you hanging out with unbelievers if you say you love him? He says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Is that, is that clear? It's crystal clear. So we're, we're coming out to set the record straight and to show you what the Lord is actually saying. Not what they're, what they're doing in those Sunday uh, horror, horror, uh, horror houses on Sunday lying to the masses. We're telling you what saved the Lord and that's what you're going to get. Hamashiach Yahawashai came into the world to give testimony of the truth. And that's to be true to Yahweh. There was no guile in his mouth. He told no lies. Like you guys are so accustomed to in this society. And guess what? He said liars are going into the lake of fire. That's in the book of Revelations. If you don't believe it, pull it up. That's what he said. All liars are going into the lake of fire. What lake? When those ICBM missiles start flying and the chariots finish the job. That's the lake of fire that's coming. Ephesians 5, 6 through 7. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of Yahweh upon the children of disobedient. So anybody that's disobedient, the wrath, this is what the Lord said, the wrath of Yahweh is coming upon all the children of disobedience. This is what the word says. So anybody that's doing things contrary to what the word of God is saying, he's coming after you. That's what he said himself. So it's just a matter of time for you to get that judgment. Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 12 through 13, and it reads, A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with froward with a froward mouth. He winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. So that's that's how those pastors do. They up in the Sunday churches, they sit, sit there and run their mouth, but don't bring out the scriptures. And they just they speak with their fingers and jump around with their feet. And stump their feet, but they're not telling the people what they need to hear. See, the Lord has everybody's number, and nobody is going unpunished for what they've done here in the body. Nobody is going unpunished here. Amos chapter 2, verse 10 through 12. Now, so I, Salakia, it's not what I want. Revelations chapter 19, verse 7 and 8. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. So that's why we're being ready in season and out of season. This is what he actually said. I mean, a lot of people, they take this word for, for a joke. But that, what, this is not a gimmick. This is what the Lord actually appointed us to come out and do. He said to go out to the highways and to the hedges, and as many as you find, bid them to the marriage. This is what he actually commanded us to do. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saint. So that's what white actually represents. That's the white represents the righteousness of the saint. That's why you guys wanted to say you're white, but nobody is white. We're trying, to be, we're trying to be purified and made white because white represents purity. What you guys are is red. There's red people in the world and different shades of brown. That's all that's in the world. And, you, and people that, how can somebody say they're white that's, and saying they're pure when all they do is steal, kill, and destroy everybody in the world? So how can you even claim to be that? That's not what the Lord is talking about. 
but you but you are that darkness you guys are wicked he said the wicked the the earth job 9 and 24 the earth has been given into the hands of the wicked he covereth up the faces of the judges thereof if not then where and who is he so the lord is he's asking the question if you guys aren't the wicked then where and who is the wicked if you're not he's asking the question there Jeremiah 17 verse 13 O Lord the hope of Israel all that forsake thee shall be ashamed and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken the Lord the fountain of living waters a lot of people they get ready to get destroyed here because they forsaken the Lord the fountain of living waters this is what the problem is and it's so chilly you call it Oh yeah, it's cold out here. Let me get Matthew. Let me get Matthew. It is. My hands is freezing. Let me get Matthew twenty. Or let me get Matthew six. It is cold. Matthew 26, verse uh, 6, starting at 6. Now when Yahawashai was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box, a very precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? Verse 9. For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Yahawashai understood it, he said unto them, why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. Verse 11. For you have the poor always with you, but me you have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, that wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman hath done, be told for a memorial of her. So anytime this word of God is being brought out, they have to bring out this account that this woman did when she, had no, she put the oil on the anointed Savior. They have to bring this account out. This is what it says. So with that, we want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, Kwam Yasharala, Kwam Yasharala, Shalom.